glory to God. How y'all doing this afternoon? <laughs> Hallelujah. It's been a while. It's been a while since I've had the opportunity to stand before the people of God. I'm excited. Yeah. Amen. I'm excited. Oh, wow. I miss talking to y'all in this manner. Wow. I tell you, under doing the actual worship, I have to share with you what I, uh, some of you may have heard what I was saying, but uh, what Holy Spirit was saying, because we often, you know, are not prepared to come into the presence of God. So we're not permitted. We're not prepared to come into the presence of God, so we're not permitted. And so we have no true heart from which words will come that is for him. So this is why we have nothing to say. We're talking about the creator of the world, your existence, why you have a state of being. And we find nothing to say. But see, but it's because we are, well, I won't get into the teaching quite yet, but it's because of the body and because of what we have conformed to. That's our reality. And so we have to be chopped back into who we really are. So we have to remember and say, but until you say, you won't remember. So even myself, I had to vocalize. It's, you can't say it within. You have to declare, proclaim, shout it out because when you do that, it commands the flesh to stand back. And it put God on full display on your heart. So what we're waiting for, the psalmist to sing. The psalmist to give, look, God, a word of adoration for you on your behalf. To your God. But I begin to say, Lord God, you are with me. And then I begin to look, think about how he's with me. Then I begin to state how he's with me. Then I begin to say, because you're with me, I am a blessed people. Because you're with me, people of influence, favor me because you are with see but I had to say to remember so I could enter into the reality of my salvation <laughs> otherwise I have no connection <laughs> so as I begin to continue to tell and say and declare see then he start to minister to you Right in the place where you have, look, you could be empty, sorrow, dismay, or just not the intense experience of the presence of God. See, I want the intense, radical presence of God. And then he began to say, the righteous. See, built me up and put me, look, because it put him on the throne of my heart, the very center, and I was no longer the center, and my problems were no longer the center, and what I was going through was no longer the center of my heart. And he said, the righteous, the righteous man run and to it. See, but you, 
This is why you have to be connected to them. Because there is an immediate answer to whatever you're going through. But you have to declare who he is. And when I begin to declare, because I could feel some of your position and where you're at in your mind. And I begin to, look, speak out and just declare as the body of Christ. And he said, say to them, the righteous, run into, run into what? Run into my name. He said, because my name is a strong tower. He said, get behind my name. <laughs> Matter of fact, he said, stand strong behind the power of my name. Run. He said, the righteous, the righteous man, he run into my name. <laughs> See, this is why you say his name. His name is a strong tower. He said, run into it. And I'll put you behind me. And I'll make you strong in the power of my name. Just call my name. Oh, my God. Oh, he said, I'm a right now, God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to the most high God. Oh, I'm excited. Today is going to be like no other teaching. You won't receive your answer in taking your notes. Not that you don't have to take notes, but I'm, I'm going to let you know that this is a different, today, this is a different teaching. You won't receive your answers in the note taking but in your readiness to be available as a de depository for the expression, look, a deposit for the expression of the thought of God through the purity of your heart. I'm going to say it again. Today is not going to be like any other teaching. The note taking, you won't go back Look, and even if you review it and study, you won't get any answers. You know why? Because you've been taking notes, but not taking God's thoughts. See, you have to become a ready and available depository, look, vessel that can grasp the expression of the thought of God. But, but that's only through a pure heart. This is why a lot of our lives have not changed. You're hearing the word, you're taking notes, there is no entrance for a deposit of the thought of God, which is his engrafted word that's able to save your soul. I was wondering, Pastor, see, we think that certain scriptures that a person say is just out of routine. And I think most of you who have been going here for a while realize I say that. At the end of every service, may the engrafted word save your soul. What does that mean? <laughs> We're going to talk about it. Keep in mind this. This is all, look, I have to prepare you before I go into the teaching. So this is what you need to always remember when you hear the word of God. And this is what Pastor has already said a few minutes ago. He's in my notes. God says, you must first believe who I am and the one he sent in order to see me and receive me 
so that you may receive and implement what I'm saying. God says, you must first believe who I am and the one that he sent, the oracle, to speak the word of God. You must know who is before you. You must be acquainted with. You must be acquainted with in deep, look, not on surface, but in deep thought. You have to be acquainted with God and the oracle that is speaking. This is why he give you the fivefold. You don't pick. You must first be acquainted with God, familiar with God. You must know that he is. And then the person that he sent. Because if you don't receive the person that he sent, you can't receive what he said. So once you are acquainted with God and the person that he sent, you can receive what he said, then implement what he's saying. Keep top of mind, the word isn't for information. The word of God is not for information. This is how you've been living. This is why there is not consistent, committed, discipline change. The word is provided to us for transformation. That you be, that there be a metamorphosis. That who you really are come out. It's not information. It's not data that you're collecting. It's not all the notes. The word, God left you his word. Look, his word is the expression of his thoughts. He left you the expression of his thoughts so that you will become, transform. Come out of the being conformed in the things of the world and how it, and it dictates and how the world thinks, but now the mind of Christ. Be ye transformed, metamorphosis. Become who God called you to be. You're going to need to, and that's true, Pastor, by the renewal of your mind. And we're going to talk more about that in a deeper way. Renewal of your mind. Mind renewal. Do a flip on the word. Mind renewal. What does that look like? We need to understand the tripartite of humanity. It's a lot of study on the body, mind, soul, mind, right, and spirit. A lot of study, and we've given a lot of play to the flesh. We're going to go deeper. We are controlled by our flesh, but it's been tricking us. That's not quite the corporate. Oh, we, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we're going to discuss the body, soul, and spirit a little later in teaching. So we get, we're getting in it now. The battle in life is for, is it for the flesh? Is it for the soul? Is it for the spirit? It's for the soul. 
The word of God says, I said, let the engrafted word save your soul. Not your spirit. The word of God talks about the spirit over 800 times. I mean, the soul, excuse me. It talks about the soul over 800 times. The battle in life is not your spirit. The battle in life is not your flesh. The battle in life is over the soul of the man. And it's the most emphasized part of humanity. The Holy Scripture says, he who wins souls are wise. Why? We quote, look, we have all the answers, but we don't know how we got them. So I don't know how to implement it. He who wins souls are wise because the soul is the key to controlling man's destiny. The soul is the key to controlling your destiny. My responsibility as a teacher is to win your soul. I already have your body. You're here. Your spirit is because you are, you want God. You want God. You, you, you want God. Yeah, you're designed to. So look, I already have your spirit and your body. The struggle for every teacher and pastor is winning the soul of man. If a person, see, this is why people seek, they're seeking knowledge and don't want all these things, right? So, dealing with the conscious, being conscious, right? Not realizing, <laughs> that's just irrelevant, not realizing that the person, whoever they're getting the information from, and that type of information, they're getting ready to have ownership of controlling, controlling their destiny. Yes, you are, because they become a medium. They become a medium. And your soul is a medium. Oh, we've been giving a lot of play to the flesh. Again, winning your soul is the challenge. And the question, well, the question is why? Because it, this is the thing that deals with the will and why man is caught between actually being converted. And then asking yourself, am I saved? I'm not. Right? It's a conversion. God is always going after the soul. The mind. The kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. Both battles after your soul. If you would, and, and, and God has these scriptures that says, if you would follow my teachings and hear my word, the mind, soul, my words, he says, are spirit and it gives you life. But you already have your life. See, we don't want the life that God has. Every time 
that I teach, my challenge, and I know it is, is to target your soul. My challenge is trying to get through to your soul. If I can get your mind and you yield your will and how you feel about me, I could, look, I could win your soul. The scripture also says, let this mind, the expression of God's thoughts, be in you that's in Christ Jesus. Know the soul has to be the thing. If, if the enemy can get you not to have the expressions of God's thoughts, then you have a mind that is being deprived, dead to the things of righteousness. Let's go to uh, John, the third John, second. Where did we go? Yeah, what did I give you? Minister, yeah, what did I give you? <laughs> I'll just say this. I'm not sure. <laughs> Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thou so prosper. Third John 1 and 2. He says, Beloved, my highest hope for you is that you prosper, be in good health. I want you to be in good health, but even as your soul, your mind prosper, your mind thrive, your mind succeed, your mind bloom, blossom. He said, that's my highest hope for you. Above anything else, this is the most important. So it has to be the soul. Because he said, above all things. And he said, when you do this, in the book of Proverbs it says, prosperity will pursue you. You don't have to go and look for it. It will pursue you. Oh, it you. is the reward of. Oh. So with all that being said, let's prepare now to digest. This is what doesn't happen. We don't digest the expression of God's thought, which is his will. Through his engrafted word that's able to save our soul. James 1, 21. So this is how you digest the thoughts of God. This is the process of receiving the thoughts of God or spiritual matters. These are the requirements. First of all, understand a true thought from God. Let you understand. First of all, this is a indicator that this is a true thought from God. When you have a thought from God, it seemed like in situation that he couldn't possibly be in, too small, insignificant, he's there. Look, because it's too small for me to see him in it. And then, and when things are so huge, Oh, I just got this, look, I just got this job, you know, six figures and this and that, and it, it comes with this, it comes with that and all this, and look, everything that you could name. So huge, again, as we were teaching on Friday, uh, some of the testimony was that that life is not for me. Too huge for me to wrap my mind around. I can't wrap my mind around me, look, to get out this mental state of being that's not healthy. I can't wrap my mind. See, that's too big for him to do. You can't see him in something so big. I mean, look, 
trying to have a, look, trying to have a child, but look, can't conceive. So I think, so I think too big to wrap your mind around it. Oh my God, too huge to conceive. And so wide that you can't, it's out of your reach. God helps us out by dropping his thoughts into our spirit. And when he drops his thoughts in our spirit, this is what happens. You bypass your reason of how it is, but you can think, and at the same time, you can think from the place of that thought. I asked God, Minister Felicia, I asked God, I said, why can't you just give me something simple? It's like I'm in the center core of the earth and I have to go to the third heaven at the, at the angle of the throne on the right. I, I can't, give me something simple here. <laughs> I mean, once I get it, I get it, but then I'm like, I can figure a way for you to get it. So I'm going to say this again for you. This is what happened. God helps us out by, he actually deposits his thoughts into our spirit. And how we know that is that we bypass, we have to bypass how we think it is. Look, once I bypass how I think it is, I got to rethink. So this, that means I have to live in a constant renewal of mind. You're not ready. Uh, so from that place, you can think, look, the thought of God. Because I have to bypass my thoughts. There are two types of think. There's think and there's a heart think. So the first thing is obviously you, your reason. The heart thing is the soul. As a man think of in his heart, so is he. A heart thing, the thing about it, it's one thing to know that there's a heart thing, but what does that heart thing brings to you? It brings you an invitation into the mind of God to see how he see, not looking for anything else for any other reference to what you thought it could be. Oh, my Lord. See, you haven't been invited yet into the expression of God's thought. See, because if we did, and we are, it will show. Look, it will show consistently. Because that's a renewal mind. Oh, Jesus, I thank you. Talk about your will. Because you're going to need that. Why did God give you will? So you could choose. But he gave you a will that is beneficial and also dangerous. You can choose to use your will against your creator. The will. You know, a lot of times we think we can't. Stop doing something. God is so awesome. Do you know why? See, again, it's one thing to say he's awesome. But why is he awesome? <laughs> I used to just tell us, teacher. 
He is so awesome because, again, he give you an escape, a way out from your thoughts. <laughs> to bypass the way that you think, to rethink. And this rethinking, oh, see, what you think you can't do, you just can't stop doing. Whether it's substance abuse, uh, I mean, you're just reckless in all, in all your ways, okay? So <laughs> I just can't stop doing it. I'm just reckless, all right? Reckless in my thinking. In the will that God gave you, within itself, Minister Star is self-control. I just wanted to say thank you, Jesus. I can't do it. I prayed all the scriptures. I mean, I fast. I did all. But you have a will that he gave you to choose. And in that will, Minister Al, is self-control. Look, it's already there. It's already built in your will. You choose it all throughout the day. You just choose not to have self-control because it's, look, it's embedded in your will. Wow. That's what I said was wow when I discovered that. <laughs> I even, even forward to receive and implement the expression of God's thoughts. You have to stay, like I said, in a renewal mind. What is a renewal mind? And what does that look like? That's, that's how I talk to God. Because you know what? If you don't, you don't give Holy Spirit the opportunity to teach you. That means that you're being self-taught. And that's why you're so convinced that you're right about the word of God and how it's being taught. Because you're self-taught. <laughs> oh my Lord, I, God is so glorious. <laughs> Repentance is really a renewal of mind. I love, see, God gave me his expression of his thoughts. So, Pastor, get this. Repentance, look, is a state of being. It's not me going, uh, look, because that's not, look, I don't practice sin. I'm on a, look, a new law that works against the law of sin and death. Even though sin, the law of sin and death, look, it did remind me. And made me aware that I was sinning. I no longer need to be reminded. I just need to obey. Wow. Got a whole different look on repentance. This is why when we go in prayer, your prayer should be prayer of thanksgiving. We should be the most joyous people because of our state of being. <laughs> so the word of God says, so get rid of your uncleanness and your rampant outgrowth of wickedness. And in a humble, gentle, modest spirit, receive and welcome the word, which implanted and rooted in your heart. And it contains the power to save your soul. <laughs> That's it. Put that scripture. Uh, he says, so get rid of, get rid of all this uncleanness. I mean, he says this is rampant. <laughs> Outgrowth of wickedness. <laughs> he says, He's in the humble yourself. 
calm your spirit down and receive, welcome the word. He said, which is, that's implanted and rooted in your heart. Look, in your soul. Where the word that when we want to not do was righteous. Because he says it's implanted inside of you. <laughs> so let's take a view or look at Apostle Paul and Christ's stance on the occasion of distress and spiritual agony. Okay? Matter of fact, let me, I, did I give you the title of the text? <laughs> the diagnosis of humanity's dilemma. <laughs> the diagnosis of humanity's dilemma. Subtitle, Unceasing Battle of the Soul. <laughs> yes. So Ben, we're talking about the unceasing battle. Apostle Paul in Romans 7, 15, our New Living Translation minister, and then the minister said, yeah, I gave him some scripture. I well, let him read. <laughs> New living. Romans chapter 7 at verse 15. I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. Okay, Apostle Paul, he said, I don't really understand myself. This is the dilemma. You don't understand yourself. This is humanity's dilemma. You don't understand how you are structured and are to function. Because the way I'm, I, I'm functioning, I don't understand because when I'm trying to go right, I go left. I don't understand myself. When I want to say no, I say yes, I don't understand myself. There is a dilemma. For I want to do what is righteous. I want to, look, I want to obey the word. But I don't do it. I don't understand myself. Pastor Paul said, I don't understand. Because I do what I hate. I do what I hate. Paul is confused and baffled by this unexplainable mystery about himself. This unexplainable mystery of his mind, his emotions, his feelings, his will. So what he's really saying, why do we practice sin if we're born again? Oh, it's quiet in the church. Nobody clapping, screaming, throwing, not a thing. Before we do that, let's look at Jesus. Let's look at Jesus' place of agony. Mark 14, verse 32 through 52, New Living Translation. This Jesus, look, this is his place of agony. Can we talk about spiritual agony and battle of the soul? Mark chapter 14 and verse 32. They went to the olive grove 
called Gethsemane. And Jesus said, sit here while I go and pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him, and he became deeply troubled and distressed. He told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little farther and fell to the ground. He prayed that if it were possible, mm -hmm. the awful hour awaiting him might pass him by. Abba, Father, he cried out, everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then he returned and found the disciples asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Then Jesus left them again and prayed the same prayer as before. When he returned to them again, he found them sleeping, for they couldn't keep their eyes open, and they didn't know what to say. When he returned to them the third time, he said, go ahead and sleep, have your rest. But no, the time has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Up, let's be going. Look, my betrayer is here. And immediately, even as Jesus said this, Judas, one of the twelve disciples, armed with a crowd of men, armed with swords and clubs, they had been sent by the leading priests, the teachers of religious law, and the elders. The traitor Judas had given them a prearranged signal. You will know which one to arrest when I greet him with a kiss. Then you can take him away under guard. As soon as they arrived, Judas walked up to Jesus. Rabbi, he exclaimed, and gave him the kiss. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. But one of the men with Jesus pulled out his sword and struck the high priest's slave, slashing off his ear. Jesus asked them, Am I some dangerous revolutionary that you come with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there among you teaching every day. But these things are happening to fulfill what the scriptures say about me. Then all his disciples deserted him and ran away. One young man following behind was clothed only in a long linen shirt. When the mob tried to grab him, he slipped out of his shirt and ran away naked. Jesus go to a familiar place out of custom, Gethsemane. And this is a place that's considered to be the place of all pressed, the anointing, prayer. The question is, what was he really agonizing over? Was it the cross? Or was it what was to be fulfilled? Not just the cross, but that some of his disciples, look, he was trying to, he prayed for them not to be tempted. He warned them. And the very thing that he warned them about he was being tempted to not to have a preconditioned mind. A preconditioned mind means that you, you are able to endure hardship during the trial. All the way to the end. The mind has to be Precondition. This is why he said, Not my will, not my mindset, but your will be done. 
He said, I've already preconditioned my mind for the impossible to be possible. That you're going to raise me again for your purpose and your glory. I see and know the outcome. But look, to continue, to keep all of my emotions intact, my, look, my feelings. He said, my mindset has to be conditioned for what looks impossible. And the pre Conditioned mindset says all is possible. That's why he said all is possible. Oh, see, y'all don't see you don't believe like that. My mind is preconditioned for the brutality and everything I'm gonna go through. So while I'm going through that, I'm praying for my disciples. Because I'm already preconditioned for what I have to go through. Because it's, look, his mind started to, to say, please take this cup of suffering from me. Yet, he said, I want your will. Oh, glory to God. He said, yet. <laughs> I want your will. Look, I'm, I'm saying what I'm saying because of what I'm feeling. But that's not what my mind is. My mind is preconditioned for the possible. Yet, I see the circumstances. Yet, hear me, Keisha. Yet. Not my will, not my mindset. I hear what I'm saying, but yet not my mind. Not my will. But your will be done. Jesus was preconditioned for the possible. What are you preconditioned for? What are you preconditioned for? What is your mind conditioned for? My daughter Gabby, what, what is your mind conditioned for? Your mind conditioned for success or failure? I know your mind is conditioned for success. You know why? Because you've been taking in spiritual data. You've been taking in the word of God. See, we have to hear different. Oh, my God. See, and what, look, to learn hurts. It hurts the mind because it's, it, it feels like this. You're traveling on the highway going 75 miles per hour. And what kind of stress would that put on your engine if you had to come to a sudden stop? 75 to zero. How much stress would it put on the engine? How much stress would it put on your mind to stop everything that you're doing? To serve God. Oh, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt because of how you think. You're trying to get me to go another direction. You're trying to get me to look, live a life of repentance, to have a second thought, to hear the second voice, to rethink. Is your mind preconditioned for success? Is it preconditioned, look, for poverty? Because your decision and your life where it's at now is a set of decisions of your will. And you have preconditioned yourself where you're at. Principle of the will we're going to talk about. The heart. I told you before, the very nature 
of the heart of will is self-control. God gave you this power of will so that you would administer the kingdom on the earth. That you would administer his will, his mind, the expression of his thought on the earth without him coming. Not your will, not your way for what you think is your life. His will, his expression towards you for your life. Oh, it hurts. It's hurt. It hurts to be consistent and committed to your destiny. Ah, oh, Jesus. If you could, but see, see, I see mine. And can't nobody look because God already showed me. I don't care what I go through because, oh, I've been through a lot. Look, we all have sad stories. But the sadness, see, I didn't let it, look, I didn't let it, I didn't let sadness raise me. Sadness weren't my parents. The joy of the Lord was my parent. The strength of God raised me. The counsel of God raised me. The wisdom of God raised me. My past wasn't my parents. I love it. I, 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 I love where God is taking me. You know why? Because I, I know we're in a different dispensation. We're in a different time because of the rapidness of what's going on in the world. And so that means that your purpose should be progressing. What stage is your purpose in? Your purpose should be progressing. I love God. <laughs> we, we, we know the will is the, the conscious, it's the subconscious, which is the, look, the hidden man of the heart, the deeper part of who you really are. So let's just talk about the body, the soul, and the spirit. We know the body is the five senses, and it's basically it's, uh, educated by the environment. Look, your senses is educated by the, your environment. Who's your environment? Who's your environment? What kind of life are they living? Look. Your senses are educated by your culture, by your circumstance. Look, it's educated by your circumstance, your senses. That's why you respond and look so sad with knowing God is with you. <laughs> because my situation yeah, my situation is educating my senses. I'm allowing, look, my situation to educate my senses, the way I feel, the way I think. What I see, what I hear is educating. So when you sing the song, and our Lord, he's, he's working with me, he's, he's with me. And we don't have any gratitude because my situation just, told me he's not with you. You have nobody. You're alone. This is why you should be depressed. Don't nobody like you. Where you going? What kind of job? What are you doing with yourself? See, you got educated. Oh my God, yeah. Yeah, because it's not a, a consistent, committed renewal of the mindset. So the, that's the body. So we, like I said, we always talk about the flesh and how it does this and there's nothing good. Look, there's nothing good in the, in the flesh, in the body. 
right? How are you educating it? Yeah, what are you feeding it? Are you depriving it? Look, look, the no good that's in it won't be activated if it's being deprived. Cannot develop. So the soul is your mind, your intellect, and your emotion. The spirit, small spirit, your spirit, and you're born again, is the spirit or the communication that comes directly from your subconscious. It's who you really are. But you have Holy Spirit in you, and there's a lot of communication that goes on. This is why you need to have good communication skills. There's a lot of intra-communication that goes on with the body, soul, and spirit. With Holy Spirit. So let's say this is what goes on. Let's say that your senses, your body, experience to negative people. He went some places, did some things, decided you, look, you had the thought to go back. And then this is sent to the soul. So once you collect information from your experience, the first time you may not follow through. But the repetitiveness of the data, the information that's coming in, if you continue to repeat it and repeat it, now it gets deposited in your subconscious, the deeper part of you. So when you're not even thinking about it, it plays in the background. And so the spirit your spirit says to the soul, we're not going back. But the soul, and so the, the spirit is telling the soul that, right? But then the, the spirit tells the soul that to direct the body. Body saying, it feels good. I'm not going to stop. Directs it back to the soul. Feelings, emotion. Because the body is saying to the soul, don't it feel good? Feel it. The feelings are in the soul. Your emotion. Look, the body says, look, feel. Because that's what it does. The senses are there. Feel. It tells you to taste. Tell you to touch. All those things, right? And this is where even, look, we either have faith or don't have faith because we're led by our senses. We're not led by the spirit. We're led by the flesh. That's why I say, okay, I'm not going to go with that scripture because I'm in, in this a little bit. So this, the flesh tells the soul, we're going to do this again. So then the soul tells, then the soul says, yeah, it does feel good. You're right. So then the spirit says, stop it. Look, because Holy Spirit convicts your spirit and says, stop it. And it's just like we get in the car grid and go to somebody's house, that's somebody else's house that you don't belong there. On your way going, Holy Spirit says, stop, turn around. It's too late. It's in my subconscious. You have to live it out. See, the thing about it, you have to catch it in the, look, in your mind, and the soul before, because look, because you can forget. 
This is how we forget because it's the short term memory. Ah, oh, I feel like that's uh. <laughs> First Thessalonians 5, 22 through 24, Amplified. So what do we need to do about this now? Being the soul and the spirit, the soul and the flesh got this agreement. I can't look because I can't reject. Why can't the spirit reject? That's the question. I'm convicted of it, but I can't reject the thought. Why? Yeah, because the soul is the, look, it's the center of your control. It's the center of your control. It's the key to what controls you. So we have to be careful about who, look, who you spend quality time around. Because you know why? They're not going anywhere. You're not being motivated to go anywhere. Do anything with your life. Well, we got to do something. Oh, let's just, you know, let's go to the beach. Let's do this. Wait a minute. What did we do today to enhance, look, our walk with God? We're ready, Minister. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 22. Abstain from evil, shrink from it, and keep aloof from it in whatever form or whatever kind it may be. And may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through, separate you from profane things, make you pure and wholly consecrated to God, and may your spirit and soul and body be preserved sound and complete and found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. So you don't have a sound, you can't seem to stay in a, a place of peace and have a sound mind because your mind is not being sanctified. Your mind is, look, because you will not govern what you're hearing and seeing. You don't regulate. You are to regulate what you're hearing and what you are seeing and what you are touching. Regulate. He said when you regulate, you will sanctify your mind. It look, it keep your mind preserved. I don't care what a person said, what they're doing, what I'm going through. If I, he said, think, he said, if there's anything of good report, think on these things. And I begin to think on it and all what you were, look, because the word of God caused you to rethink. Now, the mind, the expression, the thoughts of God, and they become your thoughts. But this is the struggle many Christians are experiencing. Being saved and the battle of the soul. The battle, the agony of their mind. Their emotions. Their feelings. There's a battle. There's a battle between the soul, your will, and the will of God. And it brings agony. <laughs> it brings, look, even those who are not saved, because if you're not saved, you're insane. That's the word of God. This is why we have so many mental cases on the rise. Because, look, 
The minds are not being sanctified. We're not regulating the information we're receiving. The key to Satan's battle against you is simply your soul. <coughs> Understanding yourself, we went through that. I'm going to get ready to end here. I'm going to talk a little bit about Revelation, though. Once you're able to acknowledge that God is who he is and that he's the person that stands before you is who he sent, and you are receive, you are able to receive and graft the word that's able to look to save your mind. You are then able to, <laughs> I love it. You are then able to know, perceive, look, the approaching of agony, of the look, of the mental battle that's trying to come your way. I said, Lord God, I said, this whole teaching about the spiritual agony of a believer and why we are there. We are there because we can't seem to grasp the expression of God's thoughts and for them becoming to be your own. As a man think his second, his second think, heart, his soul. But that soul, he said, above all else, this is what I want you to prosper in. This is what I want you, I want you to succeed in. It's in your soul and how you think. Because how you think is tied to your destiny. Amen. The one thing about the revelation is this, and I said this in one of my other teachings, and this is why you should receive a revelation every time you hear the word. Because what revelation does, it keeps you hungry. By the word of God, because it activate and stimulate your spiritual senses. It didn't look. Then it's still not finished. Then it elevates you to the next level in Christ. Revelation does that, not carnal teaching. It stimulates the spirituality that's inside of you to be able to conceive and digest. The word of God, which would then stimulate your spiritual senses to receive the expressive thoughts of God. Now you have the mind, the will of God, and you're able to say, yet, not your will. Not my will, but your will be done. I oh, love it. I love it. Change your mind. That's the first thing. Change your mind. Next question is, what are you battling over? Are you battling the right battle? Or are you shadow battling? <laughs> shadow boxing. Okay, that's the battle. Go to yourself. Are you fighting a battle that doesn't exist? You're already out. You're already out of the situation and you're fighting to get out. I mean, it's like you're standing up and you're trying to fight to get out of the bed, but you're out of the bed. Standing up.
2 Corinthians, I end here, 10, 3 through 5. This is a conclusion. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3. For though we walk, though we live in the flesh, we are not carrying on our warfare according to the flesh and using mere human weapons. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical, weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. Inasmuch as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God, and we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. The Word of God is saying, the weapons we fight, obviously is not the weapon of the world. On the contrary, they have divine powers to demolish, look, your mindset. Demolish your mindset, which is your stronghold. So, a mindset means you're gonna you're fixed to go in a certain direction. You're fixed to go that way, even though it's wrong, because your mind is set. Look, a mindset is a focused mind. Its focus is what it see. What look what its thoughts is set on. What your thoughts are focused on is a fixed mindset. If I'm not believing that my, I have already overcome, my mind is focused that I have not and I will not overcome. That's my mindset. That's my focus. And that would be my destiny. However, a consistent renewal of the mind and commitment to receiving the expression of the thoughts of God, look, it demolished those arguments and every pretense that set itself against the word, the knowledge of God. I really hope today that the engrafted word that's able to save your soul, your mind, your emotion. And to save means to, look, preserve, protect from. This is graph the word to, look, change your life, your reality, how you see and think, giving you a different world to live in, which is the kingdom world. Amen. I really pray that the word of God has reached your soul. That was my target as a teacher today.